Hi there. Let's continue the conversation about intention. We talked about intention being in the 11th dimension and how we can use it to heal, but specifically, how can we use it to heal? We can use it to heal in many ways, uh, but I'm going to focus on some intentional, uh, intention setting phrases. All right. <laughs> we use these phrases in the soul contracts class. Um, and we use intention in order to heal. Looking at soul contract work is about looking at the relationships in our lives because everything, our whole reality is filtered through our emotions, through emotion, our relationships. So looking at relationships as energy, what is the frequency that's being reflected back to us? But when that happens, it leaves an energy signature on us, guys. So you can go to therapy. And I give this example. You can just, you know, therapize yourself and read self-help books and, you know, get definitions. And that's great. That is wonderful because it helps to map out your soul system so that you can see where this anchoring energy comes from. But yeah, you know, I tell people that like, it's so cool that you've, you've done 40 years of therapy like I did. So you can map out your soul system. You can see all the players on the stage and trace it back to where it began. Because um, we will continue to experience the same repetitive patterns and behaviors in our lives. No matter what we do up here, some folks experience that, the same patterns and behaviors over and over. And the reason for that is because you need to take all of that mapping of your soul system. You need to take it one step deeper and release the energy that anchors that soul contract to you. That's what a seed thought is. See thoughts anchor our soul contracts to us. This is Danielle McKinnon's work, by the way, guys. Danielle McKinnon's book, Soul Contracts. All right. So some intentions that you can say. Um, you know, I do the six calls. I do a six calls meditation where I do the six calls, negative energy release. But then I do an energy dump where I'm dumping the energy of the experiences that I'm having either throughout my day or if I'm doing some soul contract work where I'm wanting to move forward in my life, I'm examining relationships and the energy that anchors me and I journal about it. So I take it to that meditation daily. So this is a tool to put in your toolbox in order to uh, manage your life, right? It's not always easy. We're humans, you know? It Sometimes it takes months to transmute that energy. I've just recently had that experience. Had something go down that was really big in my life. You know, situation was ripped out of my life. And that's call five of the soul contracts and six. By the power of grace, I consciously state that my environment through infinity shall be reset to wholly align with 100% divine light now. And then call six, by the power of grace, I consciously state that only beings, energies, and experiences that fully align with 100% divine light be allowed within my energy fields now. So I had an aha moment. Thank you, Jenny Baez and Rob, my friends, pointed out that, well, if you're commanding this every day, if I'm doing this twice daily, of course, life is going to change. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty cool stuff. But that's intention, right? I'm doing a daily practice. That's like the definition of intention, is intentionally doing something, doing something to 
line up my aspects, which is my consciousness to my subconscious to my higher self, physical and energy bodies. And when you make that statement out to the universe, to your spirit guides, you're going to line up your aspect or excuse me, your dimensional selves as well. And that's something that's just kind of far out, but it works. It really happens. Understand your subconscious is its own consciousness. So like when you do the six calls every day, you do them in the morning and then you go about your day, but it has this effect where, you know, you turn it over to spirit, your spirit guides are working on you all day long. It's your subconscious. So put these out there. These are some great intentional phrases that you can say during the manifesting phase of the meditation. Number one, may I be clear and open a channel for love and light. Good. May I remember my true nature. Now, this is big because we are remembering who we are. More and more people are waking up to this. Like we're finding each other here on YouTube, right? In the spiritual community. Sure, it's been kind of through politics and readers and psychics, and but it's spirit energy, right? Some of you are really questing for spiritual growth. And like our star seedlets out there that are waking up, the light workers that are here to spread the light. Um, this is what is happening. And it's happening in our collective consciousness as well. It's this remembering of who we truly are. And we need to do this in the third dimension because it's almost like the third dimensional consciousness on here, what we know on earth is buttoning up. So that's why this stuff is happening. The veil is thinning, people say, right? All right. Maybe I May I be cleansed of all energies less than love. That's a good one, right? Really letting go of that which no longer serves you. That's call five and call six, right? And call four. By the power of grace, I consciously state that any spiritual attachments that I have created that do not align fully with 100% divine light be released for the greatest and the highest good of all now. So you clear your channel. And then let's see. May I receive messages of the highest truth and compassion? Ask your spirit guides. Guides, may I receive messages of the highest truth and compassion? Call that in. May I release my resistance? May I be willing to let go of my pain? Now, this is a biggie, you guys. It's a biggie for us as humans because we have our experience and we may have had it up, you know, I'm 57. So I've had like all these experiences that have created me to who I am at this moment sitting here talking to you today, right? Whether they be good or bad. Excuse me. But... um Sometimes our pain works for us. You ever notice that? You'll see it. Like I, I, you know, we see it with our kids as they're growing. That sometimes drama and pain works for them. Right? <laughs> it keeps, keeps them there. And then they don't really have to take responsibility. Right? Well, we do that too. And sometimes it's very difficult like, you know, you want to change, you know, you want something different. You want to feel differently. You want a different experience. You want to let go of the, ah, God, this hurts. I don't like being here on earth. I don't want to be awake today. I'd rather just stay in bed and put the covers over my head or keep the blinds closed or just, you know, God, just give me something to do. Like, 
watching TV or not being engaged. I mean, man, I've been there. I know what that's like. And I was also very fearful of because I didn't know what was out there. I didn't, I knew it was possible. I could see glimmers. I could see others like, wow, they've made great changes. Or look at how happy they are. Or just how confident and competent or at peace they are. How their life is just ease. Right? And I felt like, you know, that would never happen for me. I didn't know how to get there. Um, but what I found for myself was there was that piece where I had to really face the fact that this painful life worked for me. It kept me safe. It kept me where I was. It kept me marinating in energies that I was comfortable in. Doesn't mean that it was right or wrong or good or bad. It just is. It just was. It just is like that. So really examining and privately examining, you know, wow, I don't like this. I don't like this depression. I don't like this, the relationship I'm in, it feels abusive or it hurts or it's not me anymore. It keeps me fragmented. Um, but ask yourself that question and write it down. Write your answers down. How is this working for me? What does this do for me? So that's really important. That's huge with soul contract work. And, um, you know, using intention, right? Intention is about purposefully taking a plan of action. How do you want to get out of that? Well, you have to be honest about who you are. And that's okay. It's beautiful. Because in those painful places, that's the beauty. That's the meat. That's the grit. That's, that's, that's the beauty of who you are. It's pretty cool, guys. Okay. May I learn through love. May I be willing to see love in all beings and situations. You know, I hear that a lot from people that like being spiritual is about unconditional love. Yes. That's true. And, but that is like striving. It's like democracy. <laughs> we are always striving for democracy. A marriage, they call it an institution, like something that you enter into, like you are walking into a building of learning, an institution, right? Same thing with spiritual work. Unconditional love is like that. Yes, that's where our being, our spirit naturally resides. I mean, think of your babies or think of you as a baby or look at kids, you know, they're just like, yeah, they're so excited to be here and just love. They haven't learned all the crap yet, right? So, um, McKenna, I'm doing a video. <laughs> so back to unconditional love, right? And it's a state of being that we experience when we are younger. But as we move through our life and we start, you know, we come in with a soul contract and then we start creating soul contracts in order to ease the pain of the soul contract that anchors us, that Brent brought us to this life or this life experience, excuse me. Um, that's the whole goal is to see love in all situations. But I don't want you to feel guilty if you don't. I hear that so much. And when you do that, guys, 
That is like a concrete wall, one that you've got to scale in order to get the meat to the meat of that which you need to change, that which you need to let go of. It's like you even need to let go of that judgment. Do you understand? You're a human having a spiritual experience. We are also spirits having a human experience. And there are going to be moments where we are not feeling unconditionally lovable or loving, you know, we may have conditions around love, right? Or we may not see the love and the beauty. We may see a lot of anger and dislike. That is okay. That is normal. That is part of our human experience, the third dimensional experience. So just know that. And just take a deep breath and keep returning to love. But when you are feeling like that, you know, for me, when I'm not feeling that love, that's when I go to my journal and I start writing and I do, I begin at the beginning of my soul contract journaling work. And you can get back there. So, but that is something you will, it is, it's like the job of the soul while you are here to always be questing for that, thinking about it, working on it. So just know you are not alone in that. And if you do put that pressure on yourself to be loving and unconditionally at all times and then beating yourself up, if you're not, just know you are not alone. All right. May my mind, my body, and my soul be divinely blessed, you know, and take it one step further. My physical body, free of disease, you know, a healthy weight. May my mind, my body, and my soul be divinely blessed. May I line up with my spirit guides. May I develop a relationship with my spirit guides. May I see my spirit guides working in my life. May I trust the guidance of my guides. These are good, good uh, intentions. May I be guided by my highest self. So your consciousness to your subconscious, to your higher self, your physical and your energy bodies. When you say that, your energy bodies, you go right into your dimensional selves. So, yes, we have a higher self. Our higher self can talk to others' higher self. That's why, you know, when you're out and about or you maybe at work and meet someone and you're just like, oh, my God, you know, like it happens to me on the airplane all the time. I just meet the coolest people whenever I go somewhere, you know, like I've known them forever. And we talk, 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 talk. And I immediately just trust them and like them. You ever had that experience? Yeah, it happens on the airplane all the time. Then, you know, you have other moments in life where you're just like, man, there's something about that guy. Or you'll meet someone and you just go, no. Right? That is... That's your higher self talking to their higher self. It's like all of the dimensional pieces to us are working, right? So you want to be guided by your highest self and you can ask for that. Like when you do the six calls, Danielle McKinnon's work, her book, Soul Contracts, this is all from her, her, um, her six calls are from that book. Um, but putting the intention out there to be guided by your highest self, that's really, it's a wonderful command because it's lining all that stuff up. May I be healthy. May I be happy. May I be free of suffering. That's just a good intention. May I be healthy. May my body be healthy. May my mind be healthy. May my soul be healthy. Good intention. And then the last one is, may I trust my healing journey? Okay, so like I've talked about that 
I went through something difficult recently and it's taken time to heal. And, you know, because I'm a human and <laughs> um, I don't always get it, you know. But then my spiritual side, like, sees the whole thing, sees the whole, how it all uh, equates to soul contracts, the soul contract work, what it represents, where that started from, you know. I can step back and see that whole thing. So understand that you are human having a spiritual experience. You are also a spirit having uh, a human experience. So don't forget that part, you know. I get that a lot, right, because I'm into healing work. This is what I do for my job. This is my jam. This is my love. I'm always thinking about it and doing it, teaching classes and reading for folks. And, I mean, I love it. I've never loved and felt so purposeful in my life ever. This is my fire and my passion. But it's interesting how when I've let people in and friendships and, um, you know, share my journey, that at times I seem like a real uh, plebeian, you know, <laughs> in spiritual or human growth. Right? Like this thing that I've been working through, people have been irritated kind of with me because I'm not advancing or seeing it a certain way or, um, you know, um, growing through it. And um, it's almost like this expectation that just because I do this, that you know, I know this, or I have such a relationship with my guides and people will say that like, well, what do your guides say? And I just want to turn around and say, uh, you know, your guides are not your parents. And sometimes our guides abandon us when things get difficult because we're supposed to experience what we're experiencing. We're supposed to be stripped down, get naked, feel the emotion, kind of be ripped to our core at times. That's the only way we grow. It's the only way we rise, we ascend. So just remember or just trust that all of this is a healing journey, that this journey is healing. But if you want to heal, that it is a journey that needs to be trusted. Just because, you guys, you may be questing for a more spiritual life, um, that you know that there's, that in this spiritual life, you may rise to more peace and ease and joy but you are also going to experience times of incredible pain and nakedness and bringing you to your knees because you're supposed to. It's all part of the healing. It's all part of the journey. That's what Pink wants me to tell you. So, um, yes, intentions to set. To heal. So we could go down many rabbit holes, but these are good phrases to say to be intentional. Remember, being intentional is taking, you know, a specific course of action. So, all right, guys. I love you very much and have a great day.